This is Nick Mason in his replica 1950s Lotus 11. His passion is to turn classic cars into electric vehicles and his new company Eco Classics is based down at the barns. And today he's expecting a special delivery. And I've made you tears for ten. <laughs> Thank you very much. This one. is lovely. Yep. It's a, it's a copy of 1950s Le Mans car. It's a Lotus, uh, Lotus 11. Uh, I've had it for about five years. Did it? And, uh, yeah, I built it from a kit. It's a Westfield kit. Um, and started off with an A series engine in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah, as push minis, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then kept blowing that up. And thought, hey, <laughs> I need to do something else here. You're a um, you know, I use it in track days and that sort of thing, right? Oh, now, right. Now it's. I just couldn't afford to keep rebuilding the engine. Threw it away, put in an electric motor. So now oh, it's eco friendly <laughs> as well. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh, let me hold that. Oh, yeah. You don't you, spill that. You don't oh, spill yeah. over your car. So. Look at this. Oh, dear. That's quite compact, isn't it? I really so, thought it was going to be much bigger than that. No, not at all. It's actually quite... It's a small car, right? It is, yeah. And it fits in here so well. Um, it's got 29 so, kilowatt hours of battery. Right. Which will drive it around about 120 miles. Which is right. more than enough in a car like oh, this, yes, right? Yes. You don't want to be doing yes. huge touring in this. It's got no space to put anything like that in. But I just wanted to demonstrate that you can fit all of that into, into such a small car. Into a touchy small compact, yeah. Yeah. I think you've done a fantastic job. It's so neat and compact, yeah. isn't it? So I made the ba the batteries are made into four modules. Yeah. There's two there, yeah. there's two underneath, yeah. and then there's three across the rear. Oh, three across the rear. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, and then there's electric AC motor down in the bottom there, in the back. Right. Goes exactly in place of the gearbox, straight onto the prop shaft, and drives the oh, rear right. axle. I haven't changed any of the rear suspension. So you don't use transmission? Other no, than the no drive transmission. Line. And oh, like and the diff. Like, yeah. It's like an automatic. And then we've got, underneath here, we've got several modules that look after battery management, make yeah. sure that that charge is okay. Just over there, behind the fuel, what was the fuel filler cap, is the charger. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. And then oh, got, that's, that's good. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks and orig then, yeah, all original. In, well, from the outside, you can't yeah, you tell can't, it's yeah. electric. No. Right? It's got, it's got no exhaust pipe down this side. Yeah. But other than that, it looks, looks original. I want to hear about your project. Yes, so no problem. Come, on, come on then. Let's go take a look. It's not as interesting as this. Oh, I'm it's sure it's far more interesting. <laughs> here, give me that cup of tea. <laughs> right, okay. Come on. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, it's all keeping in this uh, old bar. Come on, Nick. I'll show you what we're up to. Oh, wow, Alex. <laughs> that we is some seen it yet. machine. <laughs> What you see here is Alex's labour of love. Ten years in the making, a superbike which he hopes will break the land speed record which he and his team once held back in the 1990s. Alex hopes to bring the record back to Great Britain and go over 373 miles per hour. This is a gas turbine from a, a Lynx helicopter. Oh wow! So but it doesn't run on thrust, right? Because most jet engines actually run thrust. thrust. Yeah. Well, this is the thrust. The energy from the exhaust system is running a uh, runs a free a free turbine, which drives forward into a transmission. Right. Okay. So this shaft here. So if, let me come round there. I'll show you. So we've had to make. A transmission assembly. If you look in here, you can see the belt drive box. Oh, so yeah. On the front of the engine is an auxiliary, uh, is a um, epic cyclic gear train, and the speed that the output shaft comes out of the out of that. Oh, because this thing, this thing runs at like forty thousand RPM, doesn't it? The compressor yeah. runs at forty. The, the free turbine runs at just under thirty thousand RPMs. Right. So that 
gearbox then reduces it down to a very manageable speed for us, which is 6,100 RPMs. Right. And then so, you put it through a belt so then drive. We put it through a belt drive, then it drives all the way down here through another belt drive system back into a 90 degree belt drive that we made to a belt wow. drive on each side of the back wheel. <laughs> now all this right to there incredible. is uh, a one to one ratio because it's 6,100 RPM which is very manageable. So we change the gearing is, is changed like a normal motorcycle from the to, oh, from to, the, to, to the belt. So you've got, you've got a tooth belt drive in there. Yeah, tooth belt drive there. But wow. one of the features we had to do was because when you're doing a, a record attempt, um, you only have an hour to do a turnaround. So if you do a, if you have a problem with the tire, you've got to be able to remove the wheel quite quickly. Right. So we've made a special device that we can remove the wheel very quickly. And the reason for that is because it's belt drive, we wouldn't have time to retension all the belts. All right, so you leave you leave that leave whole the, belt in place. Leave that in place. Pull that pull out. Pull that out. Drop the wheel out. Drop out the bottom. Oh wow! All right. So the big question: How fast? <laughs> Leslie Lee, a long-time Triumph Stag enthusiast, is on his way to the barns with a delivery of batteries that he has sourced. He's hoping that Nick can convert his 1975 Stag, but at the moment, he's lost. The world record at the moment is 376. So to get a record, and that's what we hope to do, you've got to break that by 1%, which makes it a 381-ish. So right. that'll but the work, <coughs> we'd like to see if we can achieve 400 mile an hour because the design speed for this vehicle was 450. So we're hoping 450 miles an hour. So we're hoping wow. that it will break 400 miles an hour. That's that's the goal, isn't it? Over over 400. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, just, just wait and see, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a second. Just oh. get... Hello. Yeah, hi, no, no it's Les. Yeah. Did you make it through? Uh, no, I've reached the corner. I think I got lost. On oh, the barns are on the right hand side. It can't be far then, can I see Yeah, won't won't be too long. Yeah. No, I think five minutes or so, that's what it's sort of saying here. Brilliant. Okay, we'll come out and see you. Yeah, no worries, yeah, see you in a minute. Bye. Yeah. Trust me to get lost. There's a place I have found in the shade on the ground. Yeah, well, sorry about that. But yeah, you're here now. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, trucks running the other side. Brilliant. Just thinking as I walk round here, how do we get them off? Can you drive a forklift? No, never tried it. It can't be that difficult, can it? I know a man who can, though. Yeah. Alex. Next time, down at the barns, the latest arrival is revealed. We scan the body of an E-Type Jaguar, ready for battery conversion. And Alex reveals his secret. Right, I think it's what you might need, Les. 